What's up, everybody? It's your boy Phil Shock and the Nice Ted Jog here with our week one matchup here. T -t team Builder. Dang it! Week one team builder here going against the Kansas City Kingdoms and Clockwork. We were supposed to face Clockwork last season, but due to some personal IRL things with him, he unfortunately was not able to compete this season. La well, wasn't able to finish out last season and was already kind of in a position not to be making playoffs. So we got a win where. We probably didn't get that win. We probably didn't make it. Who knows? But nonetheless, we are here for week one to get a match against him this time around. And I believe Clockwork was the one person that got to knock us out of playoffs two seasons back. So I'm looking for some redemption here. But yeah, but if you guys are excited, leave a like, have it already, subscribe if you are new. Join the Phil Shocker crew today because you'll be thrilled with the king of the crew. Ignore the fact that I messed up on that. I'm just putting that up there. Just but let's go ahead and break down his team. He's got Vile, Bloom, Victini, Rotom Wash. Don fan, Mega Altario, because we are allowing Megas this season, but no hidden power, no return, nothing like that. So, a Cabalion, Raikou, Rabombi, Espeon, a Lycanroc Midnight, and for some reason, Vivillon. I'm going to be honest, yeah, there's no way he's bringing Vivillon, unless he's real and wants to meme with someone or something like that. But, yeah, looking at his team, I don't think Lycanroc really makes a lot of sense, because, again, we have, if you didn't check out our team, our team consists of Zero or Powered on Savali. From Maria Torkoal, Statler, Mega Venusaur, Excel, come on, all shit, treatment, Dotler. So, we have a lot of good options to run partial sand we can also run sand plus hail which i was actually really kind of tempted to bring because i felt like sand plus hail was really 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 good and i even might still go that route potentially but again it just kind of depends on what i feel like is the right option um i was thinking of maybe thinking about webs but then looking at his team i mean he has only like two reliable models that remove hazards that are most likely probably come so i don't know and you know there was some other things i was like but yeah, so looking at this matchup, um, I also don't think... I don't think he's bringing Lycanroc. Lycanroc's matchup's really terrible versus us. Espeon is kind of hit or miss for this one. Because if Sun's up, Shiftree destroys it. If Sun's not up, Shiftree gets destroyed because of Dazzling. Oh. Excuse me. Because of Dazzling, but they're Sucker Punch. So I wouldn't say there's a reason to do that. And I don't know. I mean, I could run Savali Dark over anything else if I really wanted to. So... I don't know, it could be something really unique for him to want to bring. Um, I think Rabombi does have potential to show up for for the... But again, I have a Sun team, which Torkoal beats it, everything like that. And I do have like things like Venusaur that check it, Excadrill that checks it. Once Sand's up, I have ways of using um, our Stalin against it. Like I felt kind of feel confident enough that he, he really wants to bring it. But it's something he wants to bring for webs, and that's going to be his choice. Uh, Raikou actually has a relatively good matchup versus like the extra sensory skull and thunderbolt. Like I feel like that's something that's really good. The one thing though I think is going to make him somewhat prevent Raikou is again the lack of move set coverage. Like he either has to be a choice spec set, an assault vest set, a shooka berry for attack set, maybe a choice scarf set or something like that. I feel like he's just also going to be really struggling on the moves. Because at times for my team, he needs Extra Sentry, Aura Spear, Thunderbolt, Scald, Volt Switch, Rubbly Tuzzly Sub, or Calm Mine. So he's got like five or six moves that he wants to run, but he doesn't know how to bring it. So again, it could be something he could bring brought. I'm not saying it's an out there possibility that he won't bring it. I'm just saying it's a possibility he could. Excuse me. For the team I expect to face us, I definitely think he's going to bring that stupid Vile Bloom. Just for the fact that Vile Bloom could take advantage of our sun, and also stupid Vile Bloom is also just dummy defensive with strength sap, and it's annoying. I think Victini comes. Victini's actually got a really good matchup against us in that type of regard. I think Rotom Wash has to come. If Rotom Wash does not come, then my extra drill just has free range to spam Earthquake against his team, which is something he really cannot afford to do. I think Dom Van's going to need to come because he thinks he's going to probably stress about Zero Aura because Zero Aura has a relatively good, decent matchup against him. So I'm not going to bring it Zero Aura, spoilers. But I did like Dom Fan's still also a really good reliable mon he wants to bring for things like, say, my Hepowdon, my Stoutland, my Excadrill even, unless I'm not boosted. And he may also think it's going to be really good to stop things like Kamal O from being physically offensive and everything like that. I think his Mega Altaria has got a relatively good matchup. The problem with Mega Altaria in this game, though, is that I believe it's not going to have... Um... <sighs> Excuse me. I don't think Mega Altaria is really going to be that good. Because the only thing that's going to get Pixelate boosted is going to be things like Body Slam, 
double edge if he wants recoil, facade if he just wants to hit someone with. Um, they could be run special sets with Hyper Boy Switch. He has to be very careful about that because of the fact that Komodo does have the ability soundproof, so that's going to be something he's going to be run. Also, I'm kind of curious. What was his weakest defenses? It's technically special sets. Okay. So, definitely a to Um, He could potentially swap this out for Raikou, like I said, but again, I think it's one of those things that he, especially when he needs a dra good dragon answer on his team. Um, and I think Kabalion comes. I think Kabalion comes just the fact that you can give him the option to bring Stealth Rocks, and if not, he can just bring in his, like, kind of like SD variant or a Rock Polish re attack set. Or if he's going to be trying to rock, rock Polish SD, which is really a set that could really mess us up. If we're not careful, but just generally speaking, I don't just I don't know. I mean, it could be something he could run, but again, I do see Raikou as being potential viable option, and I could maybe see Rabombi. But other than that, that's kind of the six or seven I'm kind of predicting him to bring this week, and I think we got everything covered around the basis for that. So, with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and rock now the team we've run for you guys. So we're bringing a very unique Venusaur, we're kind of bringing a defensive, offensive Venusaur. A little more defensive, but a bit more offensive at the same time. And you know what I'm trying to say? So we're running max HP, 112 in defense, 100 special attack, 44 speed with the modest nature, sub 3 attacks with earth power sludge bait. Wait, why do I have... Oh, it's a good thing I caught that. Holy crud. Thank God I caught that. We have sludge bomb, giga drain, and earth power. So with these three moves, it covers this entire team for super effective to neutral damage. Guaranteed. And what's really, really good, again, we can take hits from v Victini unless it is choice banded, and that V-Create will do some massive damage to us. But again, here's where Victini struggles. Victini has to be scarfed. Now, why would Victini have to be scarfed, you say? Well, again, there's things like Kobo O. Where? If it gets to a plus one speed, it's faster. So that's where a lot of people have to be careful and stuff like that. I can see him running potentially a mixed Victini. I could see him running special Victini. Because that set could actually be what could mess us up because of things like Dazzling Gleam. Arguably things like Psychic, which can hit harder on Venusaur than a defensive stat. Just overall could be that one annoying thing that can really mess us up. But overall, I think Venusaur is going to be really, really good this game. Again, if we can position Venusaur in a right position, Venusaur can actually put in a ton of good work. I'm next, we're bringing tight my Savali's, my Savali Fire this week. We're bringing Savali Fire. I felt like we needed a relatively decently good fire type this week. And I was thinking about maybe bringing Flying, but I felt like Flying didn't really fit for what I wanted to go for. I could have brought Rock, which Rock would have been decent. Excuse me. Rock would have been decent, but the problem with running Rock in this matchup is, yes, I'll get the Spadef boost in Sand, which can boost it, but they're like... With having Rock, I really need to be very offensive to handle things like Rotom then to a certain degree. And I need to be very offensive to hopefully have also weakened down Dawn Fan. Now with Dawn Fan on the other hand, with it being fire, is I can actually go and spam fire coverage. Now, I am running special coverage over physical coverage or mixed coverage this week, just because of the fact that Dawn Fan's very annoying versus us. And generally speaking, it's just one of those mods I kinda just can't stand. We are running physically defensive just because, again, it lets me kind of just take hits and also scout out his team. Like, Cobalion, we can be able to take a hit from, unless it goes for the plus two, and then I don't think we can, especially if we take rocks damage. I do expect him to maybe try to set up stealth rocks on our side. This is the only one on my team that really doesn't really care for the stealth rocks, but it's one of those ones that, again, doesn't really like the notion of stealth rocks being a thing, so... Definitely something to keep in mind with that, but still, we're running 106 HP in 88 defense, bold nature, 116 special attack, 28 speed def. I don't need to run any speed because we are faster than the one thing I wanted to make sure we are faster off, which was no speed Rotom Wash, which is very important to know, because he has to bring bulky Rotom. He has to bring bulky Rotom in order to handle my team. So definitely, uh, we are running Flame Fire, Flash Cannon, Grass Pledge, and Parting Shot. Grass Pledge hits both the Dawn Fan and the Rotom, and hopefully we'll be able to form a 2 KO of some sorts, especially if they're just weak just a little bit. Flash Cannon is there just primarily for the Mega Altari, and Flamethrower is our stab move, of course. I could have maybe run Fire Blast, but Flamethrower is more important to me. I'm just bringing Scale Mail. I love that name. I, that's one of my most creative and awesome nicknames I've ever given a Pokemon. Uh, we have Komoa here with a Totemize, uh three attacks. You are running special Komoa this week, just because I feel like he's going to be prepping for more. Also, I forgot to give this thing a modest nature. 
Because I also feel, I feel like he's going to be prepping for, I believe, a physically def- physically offensive Kamala with either Dragon Dance and Autotomize or dra- Autotomize Swords Dance or Autotomize Belly Drum or something like that, you know? But I was also thinking, I was thinking kind of Autotomize Belly Drum for a second there, but I felt like looking at his team, there was decent good chances I could get burned. There's a lot of chances where I could be in a big trouble. Especially if I don't have the right positioning, so I didn't think you want to risk. We are running the overcoat ability, so anyway, I don't get affected by sand. Also, that stupid, stupid vile plume cannot deal with me and cannot put me to sleep. Yes, I said stupid because that's what vile plume is. It's a stupid Pokemon. It really is. We were running an autonomized set though because I felt the autonomized set was really good. We are enough have enough speed to be faster than Choice Scar 15, which I believe was not counting Cobalion and Raikou and Rabombi, which no one runs those Scarfers. And Kalino, so, well, Blaze, Espeon, I don't think it would be Scarf, in my opinion. But basically, Victini was the main Scarfer I wanted to look out for. We are faster than Scarf Victini, 4 in Spadev, 8 in HP, and max special attack, modest nature. Now, we don't unfortunately get a nab of a 2 AKO on Victini, but once Victini takes up just a tiny bit of chip, it does get put in range of a 2 AKO from Flash Cannon, where, again, I can live one, I can live at least one psychic attack from Victini. But if it's a physical attack, if it's Dazzling Gleam, I ain't living that unless, I mean, I, there could be a chance I could live it because it's not stab, but again, if he's Scarf, I might be able to live it. But if I take maybe like 10 to 15 or maybe 20% of damage, then I probably don't live it. But. I'm next to bring Driller, my Excadrill, with that soft sand to power up his ground stab. Because again, if you really look at his team, besides realistically, just realistically, besides Rotom, his team just just mollywhopped by Excadrill. And that's what I really like. We're running Sword Stance, Earthquake, Iron Head, and Brick Break. Honestly, I might change this to... Um, I might change this to uh, Rabbit Spin for Hazard. So I'm just going to look at a calc real quick here. Excadrill. I'm just going to look at a calc here. Adamant. Plus two. Actually, I want to see how much of Rapid Spin will do. I feel like that would be really funny. Uh, let's see. You, you pivot set. Like, say if he's max HP. Rapid spin just 36 to 44 43%. I'm done. Yeah, that's really funny. Uh, how much does a brick break do? If he's just max HP, I'm just curious. If he's just max HP, Brick Brick, oh, Brick Brick actually 2 AKOs him. That's funny. And with that 116 HP investment, I actually have a only a 37% chance to knock me out with that. And he has a chance to miss too, so. Um, you know what? We're going to keep Brick Brick. Now, the main reason I'm going to keep Brick Brick is the fact that it can remove potential screens that if he's got any screen users, which Rotom can play as a screen user, and if maybe the Espeon does come and it has screens and it's a screen setter, I want to get rid of those screens. Those screens will be so annoying for my team to deal with if I have to deal with those. But yeah, we're running uh, 140 speed, max attack, adamant, 116 HP. The HP just gives me that bit of bulk that I really need for my team. And also the 140 speed lets me make sure I'm faster than Scar 15, which is very important to understand. Outside of Sand, I'm pretty sure I'm faster than everything except for any of his base 100s and above. Anything I believe that's also base 85 or 90, I believe we will still be faster because we're not running any beneficial speed to come to that speed bonus. But I'm just running Big Mama because we got to bring that Big Mama Sand with us. But she's going to be our stealth rocker for this matchup. We're Toxic as well just to annoy some of the things on our team. Or, on his team. On his team. My bad. Um, Earthquake is there because it's kind of got this ground stab. Ground stab is really spammable versus his team this week. And we're running Body Press. Now, the reason why we're running Body Press this week is because Body Press is a really good move to kind of catch in on things like Altaria before it mega evolves. Um, uh, also, it's really good to catch things like Raikou. If it's got the air balloon, we can break that air balloon. But it's also really good to catch things like Rotom. We can try to weaken Rotom at that. Ugh. Rotom down into the point where we can go and get that plus two off on Excadrill and then put it in range of the plus two or in the point where I can go for the plus two and then take the chance to break break, take my shots at him hopefully either missing the Hydro Pump or him just taking the gamble going for the uh, Will-O-Wisp trying to burn me on the turn that I went for the Sword Sand, so something like that. But ultimately, Big Mama's job here is just get up rocks, 
Hopefully we can things down. I kind of want to run Slack off, if I'm going to be completely honest with you guys, but I know I need Earthquake on this set. I would kind of run Slack off almost regular because it's one of those annoying models that is very annoying versus a team to face because of the recovery aspect. But I don't, I really feel like we're not, because again, we're going to run eight turns of sand, obviously. So we have four models that don't care about the sand, obviously. We have four models that won't care. So it's one of those things I think I might have to just take a risk on one of this week. But Bird of Sats, we are running on 72 in HP, 140 defense, and 122 special defense with the careful nature so running mixed defensive it's a little more physically defensive with some natural defenses but we're pushing towards that special defensive because again good amount of his teams relatively special so i want to be able to take those hits too and just be able to go for the knockouts and help and stuff like that again also with going for the toxic as well and something like altaria as well it'll be forcing to tell us if it's got heal bell or not or if it's got any potential setup so which is again is going to be really really good and important for our team to acknowledge and take in when going into the week prep and last but not least we're bringing musky this week and musky has got some normal stab he likes to share with all of you. Because besides Lycanroc, which is not coming, there's only one resist to normal stab on his team. And that, my good sirs, is Cobalion. You got Fire Fang for that. Now, why not Superpower, you might ask? Superpower is a chance to lower my def lowers my stats, so I don't want to take that risk. Fire Fang does the job, especially if already Cobalion takes his man. And plus, for choice ban is out of nature. Which just takes a little bit of damage to a KO by Fire Fang. Guarantee. But what's really, really good is this is going to definitely force him to be careful not to be clicking any type of stab move on me. And what's really good as well is for some reason Excadrill goes down in sand. That's the reason we have Retaliate, which will double if my ally fainted the turn before I switch this thing in. So basically if Excadrill does drop to Rotom Wash and the sand is still up, I bring in Mustdale. My Mustdale. My Stalin. Retaliate. Boom, knocks that, or anything he switches in that's already weakened down, knocked out because the power doubles. It's a base 70 power move, so it'd be 140, 140 base damage with Choice Ban is going to do a lot of damage. It's basically the same strength as Facade, essentially. By the way, I am running a lot of normal stab because, again, some of his normal stab is just really good. Facade and Retaliate do have the difference, but the main difference between Retaliate and Facade, though, the reason why I went with it is because I actually saw the tech used against me with Retaliate as well for that option. So Retaliate's really good for our revenging. Facade's really good because I get burned. It's also a strong stab. Strength's really good because it's the strongest stab move I have, I believe, because for some dumb reason, this thing doesn't learn body slam. Now, are you telling me a dog doesn't give you a body slam hug every time? Like, come on. And Fire Fang, again, is just there. In case, also, I also need to go for it on the, uh, blah, 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 the uh, Vile Plume as well. But 52 HP, max attack, Adam at 204 speed. That speed, again, will let me be faster than Choice Grab Karachi and Sand. So, again, Sand is going to be the main factor of this week to kind of win. Venusaur is kind of a supporting win con. And then we've got a little bit of support here with uh, Silva Alley. We also got a lot of kind of offensive sweeper potential with uh, Komo'o. And then our Sand boys can, uh, and their proud mama, are ready to kind of just put in the work from that point and stuff and all that. But, yeah, if you guys are excited, leave a like, if you haven't already, subscribe if you are new. Join the Froshocker crew today because you'd be further with the king of the crew. But until next time, guys, I am Froshocker, the United States Joke. I will see you guys next time. See you guys.